Hi everyone, uh, hopefully you noticed that I'm adding a little bit of a, a intro slide or a title slide at the beginning to help you um, identify where we're at in terms of um, the segment of the video that you're supposed to watch. So this is topic 1D, which is on precision, accuracy, and significant figures. And what we're going to do in this um, series of videos is I'm going to talk about first um, the different laboratory tools or instruments that you're going to use and have to use throughout the semester to measure mass and volume and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the fact that when you're making measurements there's always uh, errors that accompany those measurements and you have to be able to quantify or at least um, express how big that error is because that's an important quantity obviously if you have a large error you can't really trust your measurement whereas if you have a small error you have a higher confidence with your measurement and we're gonna then get into this idea of accuracy versus precision in uh, measurement and then lastly we're gonna talk about uh, very briefly significant figures because that's something that you uh, should have learned in a prior uh, introductory chemistry course. I'm just going to repeat that um, topic uh, very briefly. Okay, let's start with uh, tools that you can use to make measurements. So first off, we're going to just talk about measurements of mass. And for masses, you can use two different types of, um, usually different types of balances, but the ones that you'll be seeing quite a bit in your in lab will be either the triple beam balance, which is something that looks like this, and a digital balance, which something that which is something that looks like that. Most often you'll be using the digital balance that's located in the balance room in the lab. Um, what you want to be uh, comfortable is is knowing how to use both of these uh, carefully and uh, you know in the precise way in the correct way and so on and there are videos that I made uh, when we talk about lab will have those videos available for you that you can watch to properly use both of these instruments now another uh, uh, the next set of uh, instruments or glasswares I will talk about is the ones that you'll be using to measure volume and there are several types that you'll encounter in lab. You'll have Beaker and Erlenmeyer flasks. These are um, glasswares that really they're just used primarily as a way to transfer solutions or liquids. Okay, these are not would not be used to make measurements at all. You'll use this usually just to transfer things. So you'll maybe take out about 20, 30 milliliters of water. You would pour it into a Beaker or Erlenmeyer flask and then take it over to another. Uh, uh, you know take it over to your bench for example but they're not used for measurement because it's very very imprecise the glasswares that you use to make precise measurements of volumes would be one of the following you might use a burette okay that's very precise you might use a graduated cylinder this is probably the one that's uh, most commonly used you might use uh, some type of pipette uh, or volumetric um, glassware volumetric pipette or volumetric flask both of these deliver only one volume okay so that's uh, in contrast to the burette and graduate cylinder which can deliver many different types of volume so for example I can measure 60 milliliters or 55 milliliters with the graduate cylinder but I can't do it with these instruments or these glasswares because if you have a 10 milliliter volumetric pipette it would only allow you to deliver 10 milliliter it's not going to allow you to deliver 9.5 or 8.2 or what or any other volume so it's only has one calibration mark versus these other guys which have many calibration marks so you can then uh, deliver variable amounts of volume so one of the first things you want to think about about these glasswares that we just talked about in the previous slide is how do we make measurements with these glasswares okay so the, you know, the, the kind of basic way of making a measurement using a glassware uh, for volume is to come up with a number, right, a measured value, measured value. That's a combination of what we call all the certain digits plus one estimate, okay? So what's that mean? Well, let me refer you to this um, uh, measurement, this graduate cylinder now, and then we'll talk about a specific measurement in a second. 
you look at these numbers here, it says 60, 70, 80, and so on. And you can see these little marks here, which probably corresponds to one milliliter. There's probably 10 marks here between 70 to 80. So it'll be 71, 72, 73, and so on. Okay. So those marks correspond to what we refer to as certain digits. Okay. That's basically numbers that you can read off uh, from the um, instrument itself. So the number 71, for example, is there on the instrument itself. So that's called a certain digit. We're pretty sure that the number is 71 because it's written there. And then what you do is that once you read uh, all the certain digits that you can read from this instrument, then you add one estimate, which corresponds to your guess uh, as far as what that volume might be. Now we'll do a quick example in a second. Now, the estimate is what we refer to as the uncertain digit, okay, or uncertain uh, number. So when you add all the certain digits that you can read plus your estimate, okay, all the digits that you can um, add up, that's what we refer to as the significant figure for your measurement, okay? So let's take a look at a quick example right here, okay? So if you look at this example right here, this is, uh, if you look carefully, this is actually a burette, right? Because the volume goes bigger as you come down, right? Because if it's graduate cylinder, it goes the other way around. It will go bigger as you go up, but this is actually the opposite. So that's a burette. And what you want to read off is the volume right here of this liquid. Okay, let's call it water for uh, exercise purposes. So you want to read it off exactly at this red line, which remember is what we call the meniscus of the liquid, okay? Which is the lowest point of this meniscus is what you want to read, okay? Not the side, but the lowest point. And if you read the lowest point here, you can see that there's the number 25 right there. That corresponds to that long line, okay? And then there's the number 26, which corresponds to this, this long line. And in between 25 and 26, we see 10 different marks, the same way as the graduate cylinder earlier. So that means that each one of them must be what? You can pause the video, think about it, and then answer the question, okay? But if there's 10 marks between 25 and 26, each one of them must be 0.1, right? Because then you go 25.1, 25.2, all the way to 25.9, and then 26, okay? Now, the meniscus, if you look carefully, it's a little bit hard maybe to look at this, but if you notice, it's between 25.6 and 25.7, okay? It's very close to 25.7, but it's not quite 25.7. So the meniscus, it's between 25.6 and 25.7, okay? So these two numbers right here, 25.6 and 25.7, is where the meniscus is. Now, I know it's between 25.6 and 25.7 because that's what the burette tells me. The burette gives me lines here, 25.6 and 25.7. So the burette tells me that these meniscus is between those two numbers. In other words, these three digits right here, that's my certain digit, okay? In addition, I have to add one estimate. So if I think this number is very close to 25.7, but it's not quite 25.7, I can say that my estimate for that number is 8, okay? If somebody else reads this, might think it's 25.67, that's fine. It doesn't really matter what this is, but somebody, one person, different people would make different estimates, but that's why it's called the estimate, because it's not always... Uh, certain, but everybody can agree on the first three numbers. The fourth number is what people usually don't agree on because that's your estimate and it depends on the person reading that be read. Okay, so when you combine all of these four numbers together, 25.68, that's your volume measurement and there are four significant figures in that measurement. Okay, so that's the idea of significant figure and how it comes from your measurement. Now, let's take a look now to this middle picture, which is measurement of the length of this pencil using a ruler. So same thing here. You look at the length of a pencil, the arrow points right here, and you have four and you have five here. So there must be 10 marks in between. You can count that if you don't believe me. But the length of the pencil is right between 4.7 
and 4.8, okay? So 4.7 is here, 4.8 is right here, okay? So this is 4.8, this is 4.7. So then the question is, what is it now? Well, we know that it's definitely 4.7, so that's our certain digit. And we need to give an estimate because it looks like it's before the 5. The 5 should be in the middle of these two lines, right? We can say it's either 472 or 473, or maybe some of you might think it's 471. It, but that's irrelevant. What you know is that it's 4.7 something. So in total, there are three significant digits or significant figures in this measurement. Okay. Now, you might wonder what happens if you're dealing with a uh, digital balance. Okay. Let's say something that looks like this. You put a, 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 an object above it and you have a number that says 478.6. Well, when you have a digital balance that looks like this, immediately you would just uh, assume that the last digit is your estimate. So you don't have to make the estimate yourself, but the balance, because it's electronic, the last number usually would fluctuate up and down, and that's your estimate. Okay. So then 478 would be your certain digit, and then the 0.6 in this case would be your estimate. So in this particular measurement, there are four significant digits. Okay. So whether you use a glassware, or um, a non-electronic uh, measurement tool or you use an electronic measurement tool the way you read off a measurement is always the same there's all the certain digits plus the last number is your uncertain digit you can call this your automatic estimate okay whereas with the glassware or will with the non-electronic devices you would have to make the measurement yourself okay